In this video, we're going to look at what's changed between OpenPlotter 2 and OpenPlotter 3 when you want to set up a database and start storing some of that long term data from SignalK. So, first of all, make sure your Pi is connected to the internet and then head over to the Dashboards app, which is under the OpenPlotter menu. You're going to need to install the Influx DB OSS application and also you can install Grafana if you want to use that for graphing and visualization. Once installed, click processes and make sure the processes have started. Make sure the auto start box is also checked. As you can see here, they're both in the running state, so this is good. Go back to the apps tab, select influx DB and click open. This will launch the web page. You can save the web page as a favorite. When you first sign in, you're going to need to create a username and password at this point. Shortly after login, the home screen pops up and as you can see on the left, there is an option to dashboard within this application. Click on load data. And then we're going to want to click on buckets. This is essentially the database that's going to store the information for you. As you can see here, I've already got one, but you're going to need to create a bucket in the top right hand side there. If you just go into settings, there are a few settings here that you can change in terms of data retention. I've just left this on the default at the moment. The other thing we're going to need to do is create a token, an API token. And we generate an API token for that bucket that we've just created. Make sure it's got read write and save this information because you're going to need it in a second in the app. Head over to SignalK and make sure you're logged in. Login is always on the right of the menu here. Once you're signed in, it'll give you some additional options and you're going to need to go to the App Store. You may have already have this plugin uh, installed, but just to check, this is actually where it will would be if it isn't installed. The plugin that you're looking for is SignalK to Influx DB2. So let's expand the plugin and see what we need to put into this. So the first thing we're going to need is the URL of where everything is running. And as you can see there, mine's on a 10 net. Um, Local host is normally what you see, but depending on how your network is set up, you may have a dedicated address for that. So you can either put local host in there or the 10 net. You're going to need that token. So we're going to need to put that token in there that we've just created. And there it is. Organization, I don't think really matters, but the bucket definitely does. Um, I've just used the same for both. So my bucket is called Allegra after the boat. Um, and I've put that information within the application. There are a few other settings here, but I haven't messed with those just yet. I've just left them all on their defaults. Once that's done, if you head to the bottom, and click Submit. Also make sure that the plugin is actually enabled, um, otherwise no data is going to head across. And shortly after that, you should start to see all the data in the Data Explorer within here. You can see here that mine has populated all the different entries within the Allegra bucket. At the moment, everything gets sent across, which is different to how it was previously. Again, I think there maybe are some other um, parameters that you can set there to start stripping some of that data out if you don't want it sent across. So now you can select the signal K paths and start to select this through. If I just hold it here, you can see that I've got V direct. Now, I obviously don't get any depth from the V direct, but what actually happened was I'd select batteries as well, but the batteries graph just showed one. So um, that's why you can see VE direct. That fourth column will show the source data. So as you can see here, mine's coming from the CTalk network. So at this point, you can save these. You can uh, create dashboards within this. You can change the type. As you can see under Data Explorer, it says graph. You can change that to a gauge. And you can do all the stuff that you can really in Grafana. I'm just a bit more familiar with Grafana. So the next part of the video is how to set that up. But as I say, you don't need that application. If you just want to store this data and graph parts of it, this application is probably more than enough. And here are a couple of quick examples. So if I click on the script editor, we're going to need this query in a second to paste into Grafana. At the moment, I haven't worked out a way of actually using the drop down menus as you did previously in Grafana. I think that's down to the plugin that it uses rather than anything else that's been set up here. But as you can see here, the keys are all there. The source data of where that information is coming from is there and also how it queries it. So is it using the last value or is it using a mean or an average? And again, you can change all that in the query builder or if you know the language, 
you can change it yourself manually. Here's a quick example of what I've done and I've created a, a wind speed graph. And as you can see here, I've just pasted that information into Grafana to get it set up. So to get Grafana set up so that you can do that, you need to head to the configuration menu and add the database as a source. And here you can see I've, I've added that in, I've called it influx. The language is the Flux language. And again, we're going to paste the same kind of parameters in. We've got the URL of the database and the port. We've got a username and password because this uses basic authentication, same bucket information, same API token. And then you can hit save and test to make sure that you can actually see the data. Here's a quick example of importing the dashboards. If you remember, when I upgraded from two to three, I actually exported all of my dashboards. Now, those queries are going to be different and you're going to have to go through and update them. But the location and the setup of the actual dashboard itself will be as it was previously. As you can see there, it's just blank, but all the information, all the parameters and everything else are actually just there. So once you've imported them, you go through the process of understanding either the query language and either building that within Influx and copy it across or you just change the parameters if you're familiar with it. I'm just importing all of my dashboards again here. I hope that's been useful. If anybody's got any comments or queries then obviously put them in the, uh, the comments box at the bottom. And again if anybody's got any suggestions on how to make that process easier or anything I've missed in the video also please post that as well and we'll see you next time.